Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I have a question. Have AMD cancelled Warhol? Is Warhol done? Well, the answer is possibly. And we'll get into what I'm hearing in just a moment. But quickly, let's just go over what Warhol is for those who aren't familiar. So Zen 3, obviously, is what AMD currently have for their line of processors, which are the Ryzen 5000 series. And it was supposedly going to be receiving a refresh by the latter part of this year. I'd already leaked it was going to be Q4. This refresh was going to be built on the 6NM process from TSMC rather than the 7NM. But ultimately, it was going to be very similar architecturally. It wasn't like, you know, a ground up design, as you would probably imagine, given people were calling it Zen 3 Plus. It was going to be better in terms of performance leap compared to Zen to Zen Plus, but certainly nothing like we saw from, let's say, Zen 2 to Zen 3. IPC was around 5 to 7% on average, with some applications possibly only around 3-ish percent, and other applications which lended themselves very well to the changes possibly around 10%. Ultimately, there was also a small clock frequency bump too, and I was hearing that possibly we could be seeing 5 gigahertz, albeit, and I stress this, it was only apparently if you were tweaking the chip. So probably the retail silicon was not going to be capable of hitting this, but I was hearing mixed things on that regard. But yeah, I also have a bit of extra information I might as well throw in now, and that is that I'm hearing that it was almost certainly AM4. So it wasn't on AM5, although AMD could potentially have also released it on AM5, perhaps for budget-focused chips. But basically, the main purpose of it was, was to extend the platform life of AM4 while they got ready for DDR5, obviously with Zen 4. On top of the modest improvements in IPC and clock frequency, this would basically allow AMD to compete more favorably with Intel's Alder Lake, which is going to release the latter part of this year. So why am I now telling you that it's possibly done? It's possibly not going to be released. Well, I want to stress that I'm not 100% confident in this information, but a couple of sources who have proven to be pretty reliable in the past have told me that it seems to be removed from AMD's internal roadmaps. And another source has told me that while he can't confirm it's done, it's, you know, dead in the water, he's hearing very little about Warhol so that they wouldn't be necessarily surprised if it is. The first source who told me about this originally stressed that if this is true, this would be a very recent decision by AMD because up until recently, it was still listed on internal AMD roadmaps. But now the most recent one supposedly has this removed. This leads to a couple of obvious possibilities. The first is for whatever reason, that roadmap simply didn't list it, but it's still planned. The second possibility is that my source, well, was wrong, which of course leads me to having incorrect information. And the third possibility is that Warhol definitely is now gone and we will not see it release end of this year. And as I mentioned a moment ago, the other two individuals who I spoke to told me that they would not be surprised at all if uh, Warhol did not end up getting released and that, well, things have been very quiet regarding Warhol. Uh, over the past couple of months in particular. I'm going to stress, therefore, that you take what I'm about to say with a massive pinch of salt, and that you do not take it as confirmation that Warhol is dead. Typically, I generally categorize rumors or information that I'm hearing in a couple of different camps. One is, eh, not happening. Two is, possibly, it has some credence behind it, there is some evidence. And three is, I'm very confident, and I'm going to put this in the second camp, that there is some evidence here, but it's possibly this is misinformation, and if that's the case, well, there it is. However, I am putting this out anyway, because I think it's quite fascinating to imagine this possibility. So why are AMD allegedly cancelling this processor? Well, first of all, they've not exactly been pushing it too much publicly. Let's just be honest on their roadmaps. We've seen Zen 2, Zen 3, Zen 4. They've not exactly been pushing super hard Zen 3, you know, refresh. So publicly, it wouldn't be a much of a loss. But the real reason, and I'm sure you could probably sing this along with me, are just CPU, uh, sorry, silicon shortages. So just imagine from the perspective of a customer for a moment who is trying to get hold, procure a 5900X. 
It's possible even if you had your order in when the processor launched, you still have not received this. In fact, you know, I've mentioned many times now on the channel that I just gave up on my 5900X order. I managed to get a 5950X, but not a 5900X, despite the fact that I put it in at launch. And yeah, you know, it was what? Four months or something like that I was waiting? Five months? I can't even remember at this point. <laughs> I was just waiting and waiting, constantly being put back in the queue. So, you know, imagine you've waited six months, seven months for your processor, potentially, and then you start hearing rumors of a refresh. You might be just a little bit upset. That, so there's the fact that, quite frankly, AMD doesn't feel that, uh, at least what I'm hearing, AMD doesn't feel that they're going to reach the saturation point of Zen 3 by the time that we would have seen Warhol simply because of the shortages. And if you think about it from a very logical perspective, it does make sense. Now, AMD naturally would probably sell additional, let's call them 6950Xs for sake of this video, to people who were hardcore if they could get hold of the chip, but it may not be worth the bad publicity, the stress of trying to release things because of the shortages. And the shortages are really, really bad. They will, however, get better because of different reasons, including the fact, of course, that we're looking at the 5NM process and all of this other stuff uh, by next year, by the time that Zen 4 is going to launch. So possibly AMD are just like, mm, we'll just cut our losses, I suppose. Just hold up. Now, Alder Lake is going to launch the latter part of this year, and this is a delay from Intel, but quite honestly, I don't think that that's going to happen. Alder Lake is required by Intel to compete at this point. Rocket Lake, I know it's memed a lot, but it's not that bad of a processor, particularly certain SKUs. I think it's the 11400 is doing quite well in gaming for a decent price. So, you know, it does have some legs on it, but ultimately most people would agree that it's the, you know, next generation of Intel processors, Alder Lake and possibly even beyond, which are going to really put Intel back, you know, in a competitive position. At the moment, it's just like slap, slap, slap. The Lisa is basically slapping every Intel offering that's available. And it's pretty bad in, of course, mobile as well as other segments like DIY segment at the moment, you know, yeah, Intel are basically done. So, there is a lot of stress, of course, on Intel to release Alder Lake. And I'm hearing, and I've released this in a couple of videos already, but there was one more recently where I said that internally I'm hearing that Intel are quite confident on the architecture. So the real stress at the moment seems to be the process that it's being created on. And it's possible we're going to see some clock frequency regression. Basically speaking, Intel will come out ahead in terms of IPC. It's probably 25% better than what we have with, say, the 11th generation, but this is at the detriment of clock frequency. So we could basically be seeing around a 20% gain, single-threaded performance. And I believe it was Raichu on Twitter that said this. I'm not 100%, but I believe it was Raichu who possibly put out the information of the clock frequency regression. So this basically means that while Zen 3 is going to probably lose in certain gaming benchmarks. I was hearing it's going to be quite close against Warhol. They will certainly be able to compete in more multi-threaded applications. And AMD, I imagine by that point, could possibly even reduce the price, but they may not feel that they have to simply because of the state of the market. But they could maybe, depending on what happens, choose to really uh, reduce the price by, let's say, 50 US dollars for, let's say, the 5600X if they are getting their butts kicked in gaming. And let's face it, the 5600X predominantly, excuse me, is going to be bought for gaming purposes. I've already spoken as to a couple of reasons AMD would not cancel Warhol, such as the competitiveness against Intel's older Lake, which we've discussed ad nauseum, but there are some other reasons too. One of the least uh, perhaps obvious of these is that it would help keep their board partners happy. Basically, regular refreshes and updates to the CPU lineup means that A, there's tons of advertising and hype around those releases, but it also nudges people to upgrade their motherboard, which obviously means that MSI and company are quite happy in this respect. Now, to my understanding, Warhol was not going to work with 300 and 400 series boards. So what this essentially means is that if users wanted to upgrade to Warhol, it would either nudge them to ditch their 400 series boards, 
or perhaps we would even see a slight variant of the 500 series boards specifically for Warhol. Once again, I believe Warhol is still on AM4. As of the time I'm releasing this, it's also late April. So assuming that my information of Q4 release date for Warhol is accurate, it's not like these chips aren't fairly far along in their bring up process, which means that basically AMD essentially would waste a lot of money. Then again, maybe Warhol will not be released for the AM4 platform, but perhaps those chips could be used for something else. For example, perhaps Threadripper, although that is pure speculation on my part, and it is not what my source told me. I was only told that Warhol might be cancelled. So I guess, what do I feel? Do I feel that AMD would cancel Warhol? Well, I was hearing that Warhol was going to launch the second half of next year, and obviously it was going to be a pretty big substantial upgrade, not just in terms of IPC, which we've covered a few times at this point, but more to the point, it's got DDR5 memory, PCIe improvements, blah, 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 blah. It's going to be quite a big difference. And again, because AMD probably feel like they won't hit market point saturation with Zen 3, I can see it possibly being, you know, the case that they will cancel Warhol, which would be quite interesting. Now, from a tech perspective, as someone who really just wants to mess around with new platforms and processors and kind of screw around with things, I don't want them to cancel it. I'm hoping that my information is inaccurate and I make a video in a couple of weeks time, for example, saying, well, I was wrong. Well, that information was incorrect because I do want to mess around with a new processor. However, from a customer facing perspective, as well as AMD internally, you know, dealing with all of these shortages, it kind of makes sense. And we know, for example, that they've delayed certain processors on graphics cards already. Uh, for example, they delayed the 6700 XT launch simply because of the shortages. So it's possible that this could be a reason for AMD to do that. Um, Warhol, if it does end up not releasing, I don't think it's going to hurt AMD that much in terms of the competitiveness of their products. Ultimately, yes, Intel will have a slight lead in gaming performance, but it's not going to be that detrimental. It's not going to be like Zen 1 versus like, I don't know, the 7700K, where, you know, you'd buy Zen 1 if you wanted to do streaming or content creation, and you would not really consider it so much if you were doing gaming. You would still buy a 5600X or whatever. If you did like AMD, there was nothing that bad about the processor. It was still going to perform very well. And, you know, certain esports titles, well, you probably get an advantage on Intel, but other than that, if you're running, let's say, an RTX 3080 and you're trying to run ray tracing and all the other bells and whistles at higher resolutions, ultimately you're probably going to be more GPU bound anyway. I'm going to be very fascinated to follow this one. Anyway, I think that's just about it for this video. I will definitely keep you guys updated if I hear differently for Warhol. I've reached out to a couple of other sources, so hopefully I can get clarification. And if I do, obviously, I will keep you guys updated. And I'll be very interested to see what happens if AMD chooses not to release Warhol. And we're going to see like a situation of uh, Zen 3 versus Alderike. I think, you know, I just mentioned that I think that AMD will still be in a decent position, but it would definitely take a lot of pressure off of Intel. But I think that AMD can definitely afford to take its foot off the gas just a little because ultimately its product offering is still really good. I guess we can only see on this one. I'm very curious to see how all of this plays out. With that said, thank you very much for watching the video. Take care of yourselves, and if you've enjoyed it, of course, you know what to do. Leave a like because it's the land of YouTube. And if you're not already subscribed, well, you know, you do the subscribe thing. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.